Good morning. My name is Claire, and this is the daily message for Wednesday, August 24th, 2022. Today is the day we honor St. Bartholomew the Apostle. This is what the Book of Saints has to say about St. Bartholomew. Bartholomew is known to us only because his name is listed among the twelve apostles in the Gospels, according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. His name means son of Ptolemy, and he is sometimes identified with Nathaniel, a disciple who appears at the beginning of the fourth gospel. According to John, Nathaniel learned about Jesus of Nazareth from his friend Philip and gave the skeptical response, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nevertheless, he went along with his friend, and when Jesus saw him, he said, Here is an Israelite worthy of the name. There is nothing false in him. Some sources credit Bartholomew with having written a gospel. Its existence was known to various Christian theologians up to the 8th century, but it has been long since lost. There is a tradition that he traveled to India, where it was later said that he left behind a copy of the gospel according to Matthew in Hebrew. Another ancient tradition says that Bartholomew was flayed alive in Armenia while seeking to bring the good news of Christ to that nation. Almighty and everlasting God, who gave to your Apostle Bartholomew grace to believe and preach your word, may your church truly love what he believed and faithfully preach what he taught. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Together we say, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is glorious in his saints. O come, let us worship. We'll be reading Psalm 86 today. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life, but they have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Let us pray. God of mercy, fill us with the love of your name and help us to proclaim you before the world that all peoples may celebrate your glory in Jesus Christ our Lord. Together we say glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job, chapter 6. Job replies, My complaint is just. Then Job answered, 
Oh, that my vexation were weighed, and all my calamity laid in the balances. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea, therefore my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are in me, my spirit drinks their poison, the terrors of God are arrayed against me. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would grant my desire, that it would please God to crush me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. This would be my consolation. I would even exult in unrelenting pain, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait? And what is my end that I should be patient? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh bronze? In truth, I have no help in me, and any resources are driven from me. Those who withhold kindness from a friend forsake the fear of the Almighty. My companions are treacherous like a torrent bed, like freshets that pass away. Such you have now become to me. You see my calamity and are afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In chapters 4 and 5 of Job, his friend Eliphaz the Temanite encourages him to repent from whatever sin he has committed that has caused God to torment him like this. Today's reading is Job's response to Eliphaz. He says that he has not denied the words of the Holy One, even if, in his words, his words have been rash. This is a reference to earlier in Job when he wishes he had never been born. While he acknowledges this was rash, he still feels that his friends are wrong in their judgment of his character and that his actions are not what has caused God to create this suffering. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Andrew, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Markham and those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sign from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witness. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And that wraps up our daily prayer for today. As Reverend Stephen Kern has returned from vacation and my summer internship here at St. Philip's is coming to an end, this will be my last daily message. Going forward, Reverend Stephen will be leading the daily prayer again. This has been a really interesting and fulfilling opportunity for me, 
and I'm thanking you all for listening to my messages as I learned how to lead daily prayer. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a blessed week.